But I can tell you, I'm pretty passionate about this thing called welding, and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to shake it up a little bit, and I'm going to try and poke you, and I'm going to try and make you mad, I'm going to try and make you smile, I'm going to try and just get your brains going. I'm going to say some things that are pretty profound, because I believe if I get you to move at least a quarter of the way, we've done something. I don't expect you to go all the way. But we've got to get there. And how are we going to get these kids excited about something called welding? Because I can tell you right now, when kids go to mom and dad and say, I'm going to be a welder, they get the same reaction my dad told me when I said, I'm going to go into farming. He said, um, have you lost your mind? Really? We haven't farmed. I don't know. I don't know. You know, our ancestors have farmed. Really? Can't you go do something else? Go be a doctor. <laughs> Got him on that one. Right? But when kids say, I'm going into welding, how many parents say the exact same thing? I was sitting with a parent and a, and a student in Lincoln Electric just last week. And I was telling the boy, I said, you need to take welding classes at your vocational school. You know what his dad said? He will not go to that vocational school and take welding classes. He needs to take science classes, math classes, chemistry classes, all that. I don't want him in the welding program. That welding program doesn't work. We won't even take kids out of that program at our company. And I said, do you go talk to them? Are you in that school actively saying, this is what you need to do, this is what we need? Nope then you're a part of the problem. So, at the end of the day, what is welding? Boil it down, it's the fusion of two materials together. Plastic, metal, alloys, whatever that is, that's all I'm doing. Just wanna bond these two things together. How I do it at the end of the day makes all the difference in the world. So here's another way I get kids excited about this. How many of you guys like chocolate? Love chocolate. Next time you're at Thanksgiving, you got all your nieces and nephews around, try some welding with them. Go get some Hershey chocolate bars. Go get a glass vase, fill it up with warm water, put it on the middle of the table. You take the Hershey bar and you rub it on that warm water bottle and it liquefies it. You take your Hershey bar and stick it together. What'd you just do? You just welded it. Now here's what you do, because I did it with my little autistic nephew and I got in trouble because I fed him all the chocolate that we broke and then I really got in trouble. So here's what we did, right? So I said, all right, you want to go weld today? He says, yes, I want to weld. I said, let's do it. So we go outside, we make our little weld, and I said, how strong do you think the chocolate is? He says, well, I don't know, and the kid loves statistics. He, he gets an almanac for his birthday and he's in love. He loves numbers. So I said, let's take four Hershey bars, stack them up together, and let's start putting weight up on top, see how much it takes to break it. Okay, okay, let's go get stuff, let's go get stuff. So he runs in and grabs all the Campbell soup cans off the, off the shelf. He's grabbing anything he can. Mom's already mad at me. So we stack four up, put some Hershey, we put those soup cans on top, we break all four. I said, do you think we can make a shape? And let's make a shape and see if we can hold more weight with three instead of four. Okay, let's do it. So we made an I-beam. Or I can make a box girder. Or I can make anything else. Guess what I just did? I just taught engineering to a Cub Scout on the backside of a porch with chocolate centered around a thing called welding. That's how I'm going to get the young kids excited and go home and say, you know what I'm going to be when I grow up? I'm going to be a welder. Guess what my mission is? I want every valedictorian and every single school to take a welding education program. That is my goal. And I say valedictorian because I'm using that as a status to say I want everybody under the sun to take welding education. And guess what, folks? They're not going to come to me. I'm going to take it to them. I'm going to make it fun to eat spinach. Because that's what we have to do. It's 67% of companies, and, and this is where some of these numbers came out yesterday, so I'm not going to belabor these numbers. We're experiencing a shortage of qualified people. 
To what qualification? We can go all day on that one. The next number, 690,000 jobs will require some skill in welding. 690,000 jobs. That's a huge number. That goes all the way down to the diesel mechanic that's welding exhaust together. To a fabricator or to somebody running an automated unit. So here's my question. Who are we attracting into our programs? Are we attracting that valedictorian? Are we attracting Johnny Football to come play on our team and be the welder? Are we attracting the non-academic kids, those kids that couldn't make it? Are we attracting the outliers? Who are we attracting? I told my counselors every time they wanted to send me a kid that they felt couldn't make it in the career in their academic program, that's fine. I'll take them. I'll work with them all day long, but I want one on the opposite end of the totem pole. You give me this, I want that. I loved my kids. So, how many of you guys know bugs? I'll tell you a little dirty secret. How many of you guys know bugs? Entomologist in the room? I don't know bugs. I was an ag teacher. I don't know bugs. But my kids did a bug project every year. <laughs> Little Robert had Tourette's. His mother did every drug underneath the sun while, she, while he was in the womb. But he loved bugs. Right? He loved bugs. He came in my room one day and had all the bug collection sitting in the corner. Do I know bugs? No. Does Robert know bugs? Yes. Robert comes over and says, m m m m m m Mr. Scales? And I said, yeah, Robert. He's, th 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 that, that bug is wrong. I said, it is? Yeah, m Mr. Scales, that has a sucking mouth, not a chewing mouth, and a metamorphosis is just wrong on that bug. Mr. Scales, that is wrong. <laughs> wow, Robert. Would you like to grade all these for me? Oh, yes, Mr. Scales. So guess who graded entomology projects for four years? <laughs> Robert. Why? Because that's what Robert was into. My job as a teacher was to make Robert successful, correct? That's my job. In welding, I can make every student under the sun successful. All of them. That's what we need to strive for in education. I want all of these kids in my welding program and more. Because welding has matured into a new market. We no longer can be satisfied with the rod burners and trigger pullers. Can't do it. Here's a prop. How many of you guys read this magazine? There's a great story in here that simplifies this whole concept. And it says, and I'll just paraphrase it, kid gets hired into a shop. Shop has one of our Lincoln Electric welders, shame on them, sitting over in a corner. Student comes in, second day on the job, and says, why is that welder sitting over in the corner? And the guy says, well, we can't get it to work. He says, do you mind if I look at it? Go knock yourself out. Well, he went over there and found out, guess what? Had the wrong shielding gas on it, had the wrong wire, and it was in the wrong mode to do what they wanted to do. He took a little bit of time, got that welder up to speed, got it working, solved the problem, got him more efficient, got him producing the parts that they needed to produce with the welder. And the guy said, holy cow, you figured that out? He says, yeah, it was simple. $2 an hour raise right then. That's what we have to create. And this is what manufacturing is saying. Everybody, is everybody familiar with the Doolittle report that came out? So they went out to industry and just asked a whole bunch of questions. This one says, describe the availability of qualified workers and your anticipated shortage for the next three to five years. And how is that really going to impact your company? So they're saying skilled production, machinists, operators, craft workers, all those guys we've put welding into, 45% said that's going to be a severe problem for their company. This one. Employee uh, segments, workforce shortage of skilled deficiencies has significant negative impact on the ability for the operation to improve productivity. Which group? Skilled production. How much? 74% agreed with that. 
that their people don't have the right skills to allow them to become more productive. What are these people doing? Eating. If you can feed people, they will love you. So I took food in the classroom as much as I could. All the time. We made cheese, we made stuff, we made everything. Now, what are they eating? They're eating an electrode. I taught chemistry to over 5,000 people at the National FFA Convention with food. And I used welding to do it. So what I did, because I'm an ag teacher, I had six feed buckets set up on the table. I had three different cards. They would come through, they would select an electrode, 7018, a 6010, or a stainless electrode. When they selected the electrode, it had a recipe on it. That was a recipe for flux. They grabbed a hot dog boat, and they went to the first bucket. The first bucket may have been manganese. And they said, well, I need some manganese, please. Two tablespoons. And we'd say, well, what's manganese do for you? And they'd say, I don't know. I said, well, turn your card over. It tells you. Oh, well, manganese adds strength to the well. Perfect. Go to the next one. They get down to where the crushed Oreos were. They always wanted more crushed Oreos, so that was carbon. Well, you can't have more carbon. If you put more carbon in the flocks, you're going to mess all kinds of things up, right? 5,000 people made chocolate-covered electrodes. Moms, dads, teachers, students. I had people walking away, and the reason I did it was because if, I, if, if I'm walking away eating a chocolate-covered pretzel, right, and you're a kid, and you see me eating my chocolate-covered pretzel, what are you going to say? Where did you get that? I went to the Lincoln Electric booth. <laughs> right? And then what they did is they went back and got their teacher because it was the coolest thing in the world. They got their teacher, brought their teacher back, and the teacher's like, what is this? This is the easiest thing in the world. You know why? Because we're going to do something called career academics. I am tired, tired, and I'm sick of academics saying, we need to come help Career and Tech Ed out. You guys don't hardly know what you're doing, so we're going to come tell you how to teach chemistry in your field. No. I'm going to tell you how to teach chemistry through welding. I'm going to tell the math teacher how to use what we do in welding that you can apply mathematics in there. Career academics. And I'm going to show you the tools we're putting behind it to make it happen.